You know what, Ben? I absolutely hate people that are on Facebook and Instagram that are fake. Do you see that often? I see it way too often. You know, it's like people are constantly on vacation or something or just living this dream fantasy life where everything's perfect and just like it's just so fake. It's so fake and it's not true and it's Facebook fake. Do you guys hate that as listeners? We do too, and that is one of the reasons why we started Threads Podcast, Life Unfiltered. We're all about three main things, faith, mental health, and uncomfortable conversations. In short, it's the stuff you don't really see on social media. Our conversations on Threads are going to be real, open, and raw. They might make you feel a little uncomfortable. And that's what Threads is all about. We choose to focus on the threads that tie humanity together. If this sounds interesting to you, you can find us on all the platforms, like everyone says, but we really want you to go to threadspodcast.com. All right. Well, that was a new experience starting off our show with Threads Podcast, Life Unfiltered. Actually, a little bit of an announcement. I don't know when they'll get that show published, but I will actually be uh, recording with those guys. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. They got a really genuine show that's really kind of in a neat way, just honestly, just genuinely talk about their lives and stuff. So it's it's really pretty cool thing that they do. So through Therapist Eyes Tribe, check it out with the threads podcast life unfiltered with uh yours truly to appear shortly on the show we have a new neil how do i say that cow host is that is that good that's that's (laughs) (laughs) that's for you casey that's for you she courtney she poked fun at me for saying co-host oh did she oh terribly so like yeah like some northern thing i guess i do i say we have a new co-host and so (laughs) i I went with the southern slang cow host this time (laughs) That sounds more Midwestern, maybe. <laughs> Is that, yeah, I, I don't know. Then I was doing it, and they told me I sounded Indian or something. I don't know. I, 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 I have no dialect ability. Let me start off differently today, and I'll tell you what we've got going on with Miss the illustrious Courtney Donaldson. More on that in a second. How much would you like to develop the abilities to be grounded, insightful, more giving to others, more accepting to others, more patient? having good boundaries and setting boundaries, being easier, being better in parenting, uh, not parenting out of fear or shame, more forgiving, learning more, relating to others better, having a more stable marriage, not being afraid of a creator, being less angry, increased, gosh, it's a long list, right? Increased courage for taking action and making change happen, better worker, more productive, being a this list can probably go on. I just literally stopped the list in my in my show prep <clears throat> because I started out where we're going to end up today, right? That is a list of what I would see that really gets improvement when we spend time really being purposeful about accepting ourselves. Like, wow, right? That's a that's a great list right there. If I could have like five of those things, I think I'd be happier. <laughs> I, I know, right? Give me, give me two. Right. <laughs> I'm not picky. <laughs> <clears throat> right. So this is through a therapist's eyes. I am Chris Gazdick, and she, as you will hear, is Courtney Donaldson. But I am a mental health and substance abuse therapist. I have the book still out, Rediscovering Emotions and Becoming Your Best Self. So this is the podcast where you get personal insights directly from a therapist in your own home or personal time in your car. So this is where we invite you to see the world through the lens of a therapist, but it isn't the delivery of services in any way. Uh, Show is on Apple, Spotify, all those places. Look, first of all, we really thank you for listening. I've been doing that a little bit more, Courtney. I did like a year (laughs) of the show and didn't thank anybody. Like how ridiculous is that, right? (laughs) I'm in the habit of like, thank you for listening, because you do make this show what it is, okay? So contact it through a therapist's eyes for questions. If you want us to respond, you do have to leave an email address, and uh, definitely give us those five-star reviews. Our industry with podcasts, and Courtney knows all about being an author, author, author. (laughs) You sound bad, anyway. What's the... the... There's no... Yeah, it's not Arthur. (laughs) Arthur. (laughs) 
the reviews. The reviews are really, really important on Apple Podcast and wherever you listen to this otherwise and for books kind of as well. So this is the human emotional experience, and we endeavor to figure this thing out together. So the audience should remember you. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I hope so in a good way, but I'm not sure that that's accurate. <laughs> Well, it was episode, my God, we're, Courtney, we are on episode 160 of I'm I know, I saw that. That's what? incredible. Right? Incredible. Uh, episode 87 was Marriage and Quarantine with Mark and Courtney, and episode 95 was the big one. It yeah. Was Courtney's story, Forgiveness After Betrayal. So when you listen to this lady today, you're you're going to be, in. you're going to love her, and she's going to be awesome, and you're going to want to go back and listen to those two shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let now we're just mispronouncing everything. <laughs> Let me give a qualifier. A, I've had a tough week with allergies, I believe. B, it's early in the morning. I, you can see on the video if you see this anywhere. I'm I'm game ready with my WVU jersey, so I am not used to recording on a Saturday morning. <laughs> we're we're gonna muddle through this. It'll be um, great. Where was I anyway? Okay, they will also recognize this. I don't know if we're using the cameras because we, uh, we, oh, yeah. we don't have Facebook Live audience uh, today. We've just screwed it up. We're going to miss one. We'll get yeah. back on Thursday night when we record normally. Mm -hmm. But uh, an awesome book. And what's most cool, Neil, what's most cool about Courtney? Do you want to know? You want to know? He does. I want to know. <laughs> I, I do. I do want to know. You do want to know. Well, she makes my crap sound good in the <laughs> book. So she's like a miracle worker. She is <laughs> at, at, like Craig has commented about her on multiple times in past episodes and whatnot over the last year. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so this is not as much promotion but about you, but tell them uh, who you are, where you come from. Vosem is what, and I will say, she is really a fantastic editor. Oh. Y'all really seriously need to know that. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I, I own Vosum LLC, which is a writing services company. So editing, ghostwriting, coaching for authors, that sort of thing. And then I also am founder and editor of a girls magazine, Girls Story. How's yeah, it going? it's great. It's great. Girls 10 to 14 can submit stories to the magazine. We publish four times a year. I think that's stupid cool. That's, yeah. the, is that the, that's the newest venture, isn't it? That's the newest venture. Yeah. 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 Pretty yeah. neat. Basically, I love to give people space to share their voices, if you will, their stories, Absolutely. their and, opinions. Yeah. And we will have on the show, in the somewhere we do need to make sure they know how to get up with Matt for, you know, reality stuff and, and Courtney for editing. And you do public speaking and stuff as well. I mean, you do a lot of stuff, don't you? <laughs> I do. I do. I have to know what day it is on any given week. <laughs> <laughs> So let's I'm sure we'll in. I'm sure we'll touch on that today, actually. Uh, oh, really? OK, well, there you go. <laughs> Probably so. OK. All right. Self-acceptance. The subtitles are the demon of self-critique and learn to love self. You know, it's curious. I, I, you, we, we got together briefly on Thursday and, and figured out we needed to do an alternative plan like we're doing today and pushed it off. So but you made a comment the other day I thought was curious. Uh -oh. I, I wanted to hit. Yeah, I wanted to hit that comment. Like, I like the topic. You know, it was like, yeah. a simple, you know, so I'm curious what you meant by that. Well, I can relate to the topic and I'm sure a lot of your listeners can too. I ha I, I refer to myself as a recovering perfectionist. So uh, there's a lot of, <laughs> gotcha. yeah, there's a lot of uh, self-criticism <clears throat> rolling around in my head all the time that I'm battling. So I hopefully I can ask a lot of questions and have you kind of dive a little deeper where listeners might want to learn more. Right. <laughs> You know, it's it's funny. I, I every now and again I get these these topics that come to my head. Like I like to do diagnosis shows and I like to do uh, a dissemination of information. But the I, I I think this you're right. This will be a well listened to show for sure. You know, because we are just all dealing with this all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we really are. I think the age of social media kind of helps us to, well, it hurts us, but it, it makes us compare ourselves to others a lot more often, I think. Right. Yeah. I, it, 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 it actually, yeah, it does add, I've, I've gotten on a kick 
of kind of social media is just a new technology and we're all afraid of it and we need to relax. We were all afraid of TV like we we were when it came out and <laughs> we're fine, you know, but there there is an anxiety producer and an internalized critique mm-hmm. tendency with Facebook and social posts and all this stuff, mm-hmm. isn't there? I think so. <laughs> I you know, think I've so. pretty much all but gotten away from looking at Facebook. That's wise. I wish yeah. I could. I wish I could. My I, businesses are kind of on there, so. Yeah, I do it with social media and, and business stuff for, as well. But mm-hmm. um, I, I, my personal site, I don't, I haven't looked, you know, and I I do feel like a little FOMO, like I'm going to sit out <laughs> on some stuff. Like people will say, you know, they'll talk like automatically the world knows everything about my brother-in-law having gone to get ready for a move. And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Got nothing. Yeah. You know. So let's look at the we'd like definitions. Okay. Self acceptance. An individual's acceptance of all their attributes, positives or negative. And that's a big thing that I wanna kind of get here with a big initial point. Right. So when we're self accepting, we really embrace, you know, part of ourselves, not just the positive things. You know, when you're when you're really getting into being self accepting, it you know feeling satisfied with who you are despite the flaws and regardless of past choices that's some of what you know we talked about there there's a there's a Mm -hmm. lot there like we could just park out there for (laughs) half an hour right oh i'm sure we could yeah i mean who wants to accept their weaknesses or flaws (laughs) i mean (laughs) right especially yeah especially someone like me who you know strives for, for so much success or perfection or you know making sure everything is good for me that's the hot the hot button is being good. So, yeah, you know, it's funny. I forget why Casey was talking about it. It was something along the lines of like, well, in any regard, she just, she kind of talked about the idea of, of being good enough. It was Mm -hmm. one of the shows we did this last month. And, you know, it was, it was a very strong resiliency builder Mm -hmm. in getting the message that, you know what, I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be on top of the game. I really need to be accepted by other people's and accepting myself as just being enough. Like, can mm-hmm. I be enough? That's all you need to be. That, that's yeah. a, takes the pressure off, doesn't it? It does. It takes a ton of pressure off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I find myself also wondering, am I too much? <laughs> yeah. I know I am a lot. <laughs> At this point, Maybe. my wife is busting out laughing, saying, I know he is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. So here's a the big point that I want to do here in the front end is that failure is a part of acceptance in oneself. And mm-hmm. you know, this happens for me. You'll have to edit this chapter, Courtney. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> because I was doing show prep and I'll have thoughts like all the time and I'll just write them down. So I got this one in my book. <clears throat> it is a new quote. How about this? Listen to this. If you cannot accept that you will fail, you will fail with self-acceptance. Oh, wow. I'm going to have right? to sit with that one a minute. <laughs> right? <laughs> say that. Can you say that again? That's book worthy, right? Yeah, that's book worthy. Say that again. If you cannot accept that you will fail, you will fail with self-acceptance. Wow. Yeah, her reactions make it feel even All better right. about that one. Yeah. <laughs> that has Please. to be in the next book one. <laughs> Put it in there. Yeah, because if you think about it, right, yeah, like, people really do have a hard time not getting wrapped around. I mean, we could do the whole book, the whole show on that, which we've done mm-hmm. on chapters of my book, like, a couple of times. Yeah. You know, if you if you struggle w- with accepting and allowing that you're going to fail, because we fail all the time, like, right. all, all the time, and then if you can't do that, then you almost kind of, by default, cannot accept yourself. Right, right. Yeah, I, I think your our greatest, our greatest success comes through failure. I don't know how else to grow or learn. I mean, if you're always achieving, always successful, I mean, how do you learn? (laughs) And and that's, and that's something that people have talked about, but this, this big point here, I think really for me, when this popped in my head, 
it was like, wow, because, yeah, not only do you not grow and not only do you not learn when you when you can't accept that you fail, you you can't even accept yourself like right. You fail all the time is the assumption like that just blew me apart a little bit because it's yeah. like that means people are not walking around generally without any level of acceptance with themselves. Wow. Yeah. And then that's holding them back. Right. Way, way. Yeah. So when you're listening to this and you realize like, yeah, it's okay. Like I can be, you know, just good enough. I don't have to be perfect, but, but a step further, like I'm going to let people down and that pressure to not let people down needs to go away. And then I can really be comfortable in my own skin and accept myself and then feel acceptable and then actually be accepted by others. Like how about <laughs> this, right? <laughs> So is that, Chris, is that a mindset thing? Is that like a perspective change? Is it a, a you know, a conscious huh? decision? Yeah, that's a good question. How, you know what? I think a lot of this stuff probably is sort of on the subconscious. We don't think about it. Yeah. But, but what do we do in therapy, right? Right. We, we yeah. laser in. We're purposeful about thinking about things. We look at reframing them, cognitive reframing, if you will. And we, you know, I begin to sort of try to challenge people in an active way to purposefully look mm. at these things. So, boy, it's probably a really super <laughs> stupid, healthy person if you're <laughs> able to really be conscious about this through the day. But I think some people really are. Yeah, I think so. But I think the majority of people struggle with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about last session, the idea of mindfulness, and it was really hard to kind of, you know, stay mm -hmm. in the moment and do all that. <laughs> just drift off to... <laughs> places so let me see where are we at how how amazing and rare is it when two people actually do this together yeah this was mm -hmm. funny i i got into this show prep and <clears throat> i ain't gonna get too mushy here but <laughs> just just listen to this for a second like i said if you can accept yourself you could be acceptable <clears throat> and then you can actually be accepted by other people like dude this is crazy stupid cool if you can actually do this but just in review remember john legend's song all of me, right? Mm, should, mm. I, should I try singing this, Courtney? Oh, please, please. please, please. Oh, really? You want me to? With Do my it. hoarse voice in the morning <laughs> and the rasp and all. It might that. help. I don't know. <laughs> all of me loves all of you. Love your curves and all your edges, all your perfect imperfection. Give your all to me and I'll give my all to you. You're my end and my beginning. Even when I lose, I am winning. Because I give you all of me and you give you all of you. Mm. Goodness. You know, it, I was in the framework in my brain of thinking about this. You remember that song? Oh, absolutely. It's an awesome yeah. song. And when I was in the framework of mindset acceptance and self-acceptance and, and I thought of that song came up. I don't know why. <laughs> and the question I had here is like, goodness, do people really do this? I, you know what, the yeah. operative word, the operative word is all, right? All. Right. To have, to have that kind of security and safety in a relationship to be able to do that, including a relationship with yourself, right? This is hard. Hard. <laughs> I think it takes years of practice. <laughs> I really do. You know, I mean, yeah. and, and it's, it's funny what I, what I wanted to do with the song and those lyrics, um, you know, and, and if you're listening to this at home, push pause and go check out the song, listen to to it and be thoughtful about kind of what's going on here from from this standpoint. Again, John Legend's song, All of Me. We'll have it on the show notes. Right, Neil? Right. He shakes his head. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, we we sing these songs. We 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 have these thoughts. And. <clears throat> We had these ideals, and particularly in a very close relationship like marriage, mm -hmm. or in our day-to-day -day assessment of ourselves when we're listening to things like this, and that's not new, by the way. That's not social media's impact. We had these songs in the 1980s where I did this kind of stuff in my own head as a teenager <laughs> trying to be, like, all for this person. Right, right. You know? Yeah. That's... <sighs> Look, I'm trying to really, really dramatically lay out that this is so 
So this is really a simple concept, self-acceptance, but the reality of the challenge that we have inside ourselves to do this completely butts right up against insecurities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all have the need for security. So. And it, it's elusive. (laughs) It is. Elusive. It is. Even when you look around, look, I didn't think about this in my show prep, but I remember one particular lightning bolt moment. I call it a God moment. That's that's just my my beliefs and you know kind of where I where I was at. And I, I struggled a lot as a young man with a divorced family and and this type of thing. And I remember I was at Tridelphia Junior High, and I was on the right side of the building, front end, second flight of stairs down, taking my my last step to go off the steps and through the doors to my class. I remember it that well. Wow. Right? <laughs> okay. And and what it was was just a boom, kind of a, an, an immediate thought about. I didn't even think about this when I was doing show prep about about this topic. Mm-hmm. And it was it was a, a message of some sort that just told me, hey, wait a minute. If you feel the way you're feeling, you need to realize that the next person that's super close to me, that person has felt the exact same way that I feel. Right. Wow. At some that's, point. That's right? a big aha moment, especially for someone of that age. I was in like the eighth grade. That's huge. Well, no wonder you do what you do now for a living. (laughs) Yeah, probably so. (laughs) Good point. (laughs) Good point. But that helped me to realize, like, I I really, now, I I struggled a a good bit for another few years, for sure, on a lot of things. And, well, hell, well into my adulthood, I still struggle. But but being able to realize that was so crucial because it didn't set me off alone in my own head struggling with the demons of self-critique right so Mm -hmm. you're saying that you were better able to accept your own internal workings and feelings and everything about you knowing that you were not the only one going through that right okay right wow that's it was it it was just a god moment a lightning boat kind of reality i don't know i don't know where else it would have come from because it was (laughs) it really was too it was just so random courtney yeah wow it was so random so where else are we at here? Okay, so yeah, recently we did a show on the 12 steps. Are you familiar with the 12 steps, Courtney, much of Alcoholics Anonymous and all the recovery work and stuff? Somewhat. <laughs> somewhat. Yeah, somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. More of an indirect, indirectly, I am familiar. <laughs> I, I think you'd be really interested in, in that show that we did because it is what works best for most mm-hmm. and, in recovery. And it just lays out a really awesome way of kind of going through a recovery process. It's only like, three or four weeks ago, um, okay. I was, I was stumbled upon this dude at a Gastonia honey hunters game, <laughs> chatted him up. And Rick was so kind to share that he was 13 years in sobriety. And we talked about the 12 steps. So nice. it, was a, it was a really cool episode and listening audience. I think you'd, you'd enjoy checking it out as well. Um, uh, because it was the 12 step for all of us. That's what we titled <clears> it, but people freak out specifically on the fourth step, you know, why? Because they say they need to take a fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Mm. <sighs> so you're saying, look at all of who we are. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's scary. It's scary. <clears throat> and what's interesting is as we're saying this, you know, I'll make the point when I'm working with the issues of recovery, with people going through the 12 step process. That the reality of it is, man, you're you're looking at all. And when people do a fourth step, if I'm correct, by the way, don't hold me to that. It might be the fifth or the I'm pretty sure it's the fourth, but it's, it's one of those right in there. It, you know, people will just list all of the crap about themselves. <laughs> mm. Yeah. What about the good? <laughs> they will just that's... completely leave that off the list. Wow, that's a good point. Why do we do that? Right. Go ahead. You have yeah. I don't know. I wish I knew. I think it's easier to want to fix our weaknesses than to live out our strengths. I think it's easier to point out our own flaws than to accept that we are also good, also successful, also a you know person worthy of knowing and and loving. You know, I don't know why I'm all backwards today, Courtney, but I'm going to do another backwards thing. (laughs) Oh, go for it. Go for it. Because it it fits right now with what you were just commenting about, you know, or how this came up. 
there's there's a therapy activity I was going to save kind of, you know, for towards the end. But I've done this in therapy many times over. So practice along at home, if you will, right? It's And it's really simple to build oneself up. And because we just get bunny trail on all the negative crap. You know, my hair doesn't look quite right today. My belly's too big. <laughs> You know, I, my my voice is kind of cracking. I've already hacked up some of the words that we've said and started a show. Like, this is terrible. What am I doing today? You know, right? We get yeah. so crushing to ourselves. So what we don't want to do that. When it, This is an activity that I'll suggest for people to build yourself up. And it's real simple. You just take one thing that you like about yourself. Now, I've actually had whole sessions with people sometimes. Wow. Literally. You know, trying to get a, a list or, 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 or a, a thing or two or three of things that they like about themselves. People will just be so beaten down with depression and negative and self-critique and these demons of insecurities, all this, right? And struggle with coming up with a couple or a few. So we just want to start out with one. And if you have a hard time coming up with one thing that you like about yourself, definitely go to a therapy experience because <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard. Right, <laughs> right. right. Actually, you're a pretty engaging person, Courtney. Let's let's play along. Will you play along with me? Sure, let's, yeah. What's I'm one game. thing that you like about yourself? Let's see. I like that I'm reliable. So if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Perfect. And now we can go to a long list when I'm working in therapy with people. They're mm -hmm. like, you know, what else do you like about yourself? Again, I don't like my hair. I don't like my belly. I don't like my nose. My thing looks bad. My car's a crap shot. I don't have a nice enough house. All this, right? Mm -hmm. We only want one 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 <laughs> what is one thing maybe courtney that you don't like about yourself oh uh, let's see i i'm not a good listener <laughs> did i say yeah. that did i tell everyone that did i admit it you can, did. can i take that back can i take that it back? was that was mark's voice wasn't it is he in the no. background <laughs> no he's not i i'm not i i realized about myself recently that i am not a good listener i'm trying i'm trying and that's a big issue to take on, but we want to list the one thing that we like about ourselves in this little therapy activity and legitimately like celebrate it. It's mm -hmm. a good thing that you like about yourself. It's cool. And then you want to take the one thing you happen to pick kind of a big one. Let's start <laughs> off with a small one, yo, in the audience. But you take okay, that one my thing ears stick out. Oh, <laughs> well, we also have to be able to change it. Uh, <clears throat> and then you change the one thing or you work on addressing the one thing that you don't like about yourself. Mm -hmm. right? right. And literally you could take your ears and like, <laughs> no, wait a minute. You know what? I, 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 I address my ears the way I look at it. It flops my hair up better. And you know what? You can begin to like that part of yourself that you previously actually disliked. So yeah. now when you accomplish this, you've actually got two that you like about yourself. Oh, I love it. Right. Yeah. It's a simple thing. One that you like, one that you don't like, you work with it, and it turns into two that you like about yourself. Mm. You can see the next step. You're a brilliant person. <laughs> What's the next step? You take the next thing that you don't like about yourself. Only one. Only one. Only one. You're celebrating two and you're changing one. But that's yeah. doable, right? That's it's really people doable. can do that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it becomes three to mm -hmm. one, four to one. How do you think you feel? in accepting yourself and celebrating yourself and building yourself up after a month, mm -hmm. two or three months of doing this. And you have 10 things that you're celebrating mm. about yourself. And you oh, only got Chris, one that you're addressing. That's the key. We have to celebrate those things that we're switching from. We don't like to, we are, are now strengths or things we're able to do. Yeah. Cause I think we forget to celebrate. I think we just move on to the next thing and we don't hold on to that. Um, yeah, the joy for highlighting that, you know, people are afraid to kind of, you know, build yourself up and brag a little bit about yourself. Brag is mm -hmm. not even the right word. You know, right. Can, can you not like say, you know what? I'm good at speaking, right. you know, developed a podcast, developed a written speech. I suck at writing, though. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we this, don't you? we can't be good at everything, Chris. <laughs> you know this. <laughs> My, I needed like dictator. I needed someone to do a <laughs> spelling thing for me. I need this whole sentence structure thing I fail with. Should I go on, Courtney? Is there anything no, you can add? No, because you said one thing at a time. 
<laughs> Courtney, good job. <laughs> and again, if you're tuning into this late, Courtney is my editor, so she works with me and knows this. He's just being gracious to me. <laughs> okay, the title, Self-Acceptance, The Demon of Self-Critique, Learning to Love Oneself, right? What do you think, Courtney, we mean by demon and the whole mm. demon of self-critique? How does that play in your heart? In my heart, it plays as a as a negative voice, like a self-thought or a lie that we keep replaying over and over that won't go away unless we do something specific or intentional. Which now we have an activity for such. Ah. Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> yeah. We're full, we're full of games and activities today. Yes. <laughs> well, no, I was referring to the one that we just did, but. <clears throat> oh, oh, okay, good. Yeah. So the definition of a demon, a demon, listen to this, an evil spirit or devil, especially one thought to possess a person or mm. act as a, here's the big quote, tormentor. Oh, oh, yeah. That's a good Torment. word. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Does 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 self critique perpetually mm-hmm. done not torment us? Oh, absolutely. That's a great word. I don't know a better word. Yeah. It like I said, it replays over and over. Every day or every week or every hour for some people. I, I almost <laughs> feel like it is evil. Mm-hmm. Oh, without a doubt. You know. You know, we, we religious people always talk about, oh, you know, you got this soft, quiet voice. He talks to you. And he, he helps you. The creator's with you all the time. You know, and that's great. And I'm not belittling that. Like, listen, I, I right. said on the show, I'm a Christian. I love God. He's awesome. And it is a strong voice. I think I just told you about one earlier in the show. But we right. also have that negative, right. self-destructive, yeah. tear him down, tormenting critique yeah. and yeah. doubt and fear and that's an equally active thing right yeah right and you know another word for the devil or the evil one is uh liar the liar it's all lies so that's what we need to understand right yeah (laughs) yeah absolutely and so as you begin to get into self-acceptance you really is it i didn't think about this courtney can we say that you become a truth teller oh about yourself I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. You know, I like that. The antithesis of self-doubt <laughs> is telling the truth. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you hear people say that. <clears throat> I mean, I need to write that one down, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I be- Do it. Because, you know, you hear people say, you know, there's you have a purpose. There's a point to you. There's good about you. But, you know, it sucks, man, because people really get beaten down into a place of not believing that. Mm-hmm. And, and that's... That's a bummer. You yeah. Know, that that's a bummer. That's um, a that's heavy baggage to always carry around. Yeah. Again, tormenting. Yeah. Tormenting. Mm. And we do it to ourselves. Tormenting. Yeah. And you're right, we do it to ourselves. Yeah. You know, when people say be good <laughs> to yourself, this is what we're trying to talk about. And, and again, so, if you think you're alone, we all do it. Yeah. We're not alone. So what do you recommend in the moment? So let's say we I walk away from this and today I think I'm not a good listener, I'm not a good friend. What should I do in that moment? Do I do I have a little rubber band on my wrist and snap myself back into the truth or what do I <laughs> Oh boy, that is a good that's a good that's a good question. Perfect, perfect, really. Let's let's park out here and play around. Hey Neil, uh, I'm curious because I didn't start my clock. I'm at twenty four in. Where are we at? 33 so i was like because i knew i was way behind so i'm about what seven minutes behind okay it's about midpoint show courtney i need to get like where the <laughs> heck am i because that's a <clears throat> that's an involved question so so ask that again let's really think so my about question that. is let's say we're right in the middle of one of the tormenting episodes what can we do to redirect ourselves <laughs> I guess I got into a religious mindset for a second, and the first thing that came into my mind is pray, <laughs> which is probably a good answer. Yeah, <laughs> you know, always, but, always good. Answer. Yeah, all right, but 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 honestly, playing off of that, you're right. right. That that that's a very powerful moment to get stuck in, and I I do land on relying on trusted others in your life a mm. lot. Mm. Okay. Yeah. You know. Because being realistic, 
I just gave you a little bit of an activity that I do talk about doing, you know, with people. But boy, it's it, you really can get in a centrifuge, right? You know what a centrifuge is, right? Yeah, just, just spinning. <laughs> you just spinning hard, like with a lot of G's. And yeah. when a centrifuge is really, really rolling in a circular way, it's it's hard. And the more that it gets going, it's harder and harder to get out. So I'm thinking of the people that have anxiety. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, or people that get stuck into an internalized state of depression, you mm -hmm. know, clinically mm. people that have a, a heavy like domestic violence or even a, a how, let's just water that down and say you've got somebody in your life that's highly critical. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's that takes a lot to get out of that. And so I'm making a big point on like. You know, you may need help from a trusted other who's going to say, hey, wait a minute. Why mm -hmm. are you crushing yourself right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bounce off the wall a little bit and you go to another thought and you miss my thoughts sometimes. <laughs> but you're not a terrible listener. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I and, feel better. <laughs> and, and actually, Courtney, I would tell you, yeah. I was surprised actually that you used that. I'll be real with you right now. I was surprised that you used that and. I think you're true, and I know you would be a genuine person. You must have really kind of identified that a little bit recently. That surprises me because I feel like you're right on point. Oh, thank you. Like you, you, you have a caring attitude, mm -hmm. and you know it, it. It it plays out to me. Well, I appreciate that. So we got yeah, we got you out of that. <laughs> Did we? Yes. So what, what comes to your mind that that's, I, I spent a long time on that to make a, hopefully a good point to get out of it with somebody else, but what comes to your mind? Oh, I think that's, I think that's a great, great strategy is somehow you have to combat the lie or the tormentor with either truth or something positive. So maybe it's as simple as writing that one thing that you're, that you like about yourself in different places, you know, have it on a mirror, have it in your car, have it, you know, put on your coffee mug, <laughs> whatever the case may be. Stamp it on my forehead. Yeah. I don't know. You know, literally sometimes people will get like tattoos for things like that. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. there are a million and one kind of strategies along those lines, you know, to begin highlighting and understanding, you know, building that up. So Mm -hmm. gratitude lists, yeah. developing, you know, mirror speak. So you, mm -hmm. you're right on your mirror in the morning, a reminder, you know, we get wristbands to remind ourselves of things. Mm -hmm. We do do a lot of things like that behaviorally, but yeah. Yeah. But I do like the idea of someone else kind of speaking into you as well. Some wise person that you can, that you trust. I really yeah, like that. Key. Yeah. That's a key there. You do have to trust a person. Yeah. <clears throat> can't and really is, lie to yeah. yourself. You can't go yeah. up to somebody that you don't know or somebody that you don't value. You know, right. there's a person right. on the street. Hey, do I listen well? Or are you? <laughs> yeah, it would yeah, mean nothing. Yeah, so. you hey, you're, you're a nice person. You're good. You know, right? <laughs> that's not going to work. Right. Someone that you know and trust and, and all that. Critique is different than self-assessment or taking inventory. Hmm. I thought that's about true. this and I thought, well, you know, is it? different than did doing a self-assessment. And I think we highlighted that before, you know, taking an inventory and in 12 step work, right. Assessing yourself and your skills, doing a job performance evaluation, even right. Mm -hmm. Like we have these different assessments, but I want to draw a distinction and why we want to crush critique mm -hmm. because critique is solely tormenting and solely actively tearing down of mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. I think it's the tone. I think I think the tone has everything to do with it. The the critique, the tone of critique is a negative, like you said, to to make someone smaller or to make yourself smaller. And there's almost a you know an a, a sense that it won't change. But assessment is more of okay, what what do I need to know about myself to change, right? <laughs> yeah. And you know, interesting. So I was tooling around a little bit on, on, on Google. And I didn't think about this, but this is, this is awesome because you seriously are really good at editing. You're really good with, 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 with writing and, and doing that thing like that is, would you agree honestly that that that's a skill of yours, right? 
Uh, yes, I guess. Right. Yeah. Right. So in writing, am I not correct in saying that there's a there's a whole writing activity of critique? You know mm -hmm. that that word <clears throat> is used a lot. Am yeah. I wrong in 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 the true writing circles? I'm an author, but I'm not in the true writing circles. So yeah. talk about that. What does that do in your mind? Well, honestly, I don't use that word. Okay. I don't. And for that very reason, I think the tone of it is so negative. And I think especially with with people who are creatives, writers, artists, that word it does it, it it strips away the confidence that that they have. Like even even you, Chris, you you keep saying, I can't believe I'm a writer. I'm not a writer. I'm not, you know, I, you're doing it yourself, man. You're a writer. You're an author. I'm gonna speak some truth into you right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you kind of been trying to do that for like the last year. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not being successful. <laughs> One of my drawbacks is I do tend to be stubborn. I'm slow on the uptake. I, I, I don't like changes very, very well. That is a that is yeah. a negative. And but you know what? You and seriously, you you have done that, and I have heard you. Yeah. I have heard, you. and mm -hmm. more and more. I mean, I think it takes a little while to to take on a true identity of that. Like it does still blow my mind, audience. Listen, like I have written a book. Like I yeah. still say that sometimes. It's and hard, I'm like, yeah. what the hell? Like, did that really happen? To me? You know? And, and you know, it you did. know, one of the things that I think has has stunted my development with that, Courtney. You well, you won't you won't laugh, but I think you'll you'll agree. You know, I never saw it in a bookstore. You didn't? No, I never got that sort of that moment. Oh yeah, you need that moment. <laughs> you know? And and I didn't and dead gummit, I didn't get the the Morgan James, you know, uh red carpet thing. Yeah, I'm hoping a uh, stupid COVID. I'm hoping that comes back soon. I'm so sick of this crap, you know? <laughs> I know. Like, I, because I it did. I really I feel like my kids, I feel horrible that my two children, 19 and 16, like I was just talking to my son yesterday, like his whole high school experience has been blown up. Yeah. Uh, I think it's everyone's just sick of it. Yeah. It and and my author experience in some yeah, ways. Yeah. It was impacted for sure. Yeah. Way. And yeah. so so I guess I just you, gotta hurry up. You'll have to I was gonna say you have to write the second one. <laughs> I'm writing it. Do you know that? I do now. Oh yeah, I'm I've excited. been thinking at it. Nice. Yeah, yeah, get ready for, for your turn. I look I look forward to critiquing it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Perfect. Question, Miss Donaldson. Yes. Can loving yourself be something different than accepting yourself? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Obviously, yes, or you wouldn't have asked it. <laughs> <laughs> Good intuition. Well, they're different words, aren't they? I mean, I they do are. like thinking about words. Yeah. And the way that we use them. Yeah. And what meaning. Here's a really important therapy question. A little side note. A lot of times in session with people, I'll ask you, like, you know, because I had the question asked to me on a topic. Oh, mm -hmm. Chris, what does that mean to you? And I'm like, well, I yeah. don't know. I don't know what it means to me. What the, you know, it really stunned me. Yeah, and the words they they carry meaning to us and what we ascribe to that and all. So, mm -hmm. yeah, can can loving yourself be different than accepting yourself? You know, when you said that, I had I couldn't think about self. I had to think about the words that related to someone else. So I can accept someone else without loving them, or I can love them, but not accept something about them. I don't Absolutely. know. So then I had right. to turn it back to myself and say, yeah, they are different words, but I think maybe we interchange them a lot. We do interchange them. And I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, let's, so let's think about this a little bit. And I, and you're right. I had the, the adv advantage of being, you know, prepping my thoughts here and stuff. You know, another thing that we say about like loving our spouse, <clears throat> you, you, I don't know if, how long you've been married. Well, I know how long you've been married, Courtney, because we talked about it before <laughs> on the show. But when you've been married for a certain amount of time, you really begin to figure out, like, wait a minute, every single day mm -hmm. I have to make a choice of loving that person. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't just, you know, click automatically, right? Right. Yep. It is a choice. Yeah. So you see where I'm going, right? I do. <laughs> where am I going, brilliant one? Oh, no, you keep going. <laughs> 
<laughs> is it not then the same thing that we have to wake up most every day, really, and renew and renew and renew again and again the love that we have in and for ourselves? Hmm. Right? Absolutely. This is not something that you set into motion and just pop out and have. Right, right. Wow, that's very that's very interesting because that takes intentionality. Perfect word, you know. I'm a very purposeful person when I'm working with people in therapy and mental health, and mm -hmm. really I try kind of in my own life, like, you know, what the heck am I doing here? <laughs> what am I doing there? What am I, how am I, how can I improve this situation or improve this process? Or, you know, why would I expect, you know, they say in AA, you know, doing the same thing and the insanity and expecting a different result, you know, yeah. <clears throat> but, but we do these things. And so, yeah, I, I think, you know, when you when you follow the concepts that you've learned and people write about, you know, loving your spouse or loving others, there's a lot of similarities in what we have mm -hmm. to do for ourselves. And, you know, mm -hmm. question mark, I don't know that there's as much out there about that. No, I don't. Yourself. I don't think there is. Yeah. Is there? I don't yeah. I don't think there is. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking about that in a moment, like. It's not like we have a class that teaches us how to love ourselves. <laughs> There's no workshop. There's no. Dead gum, don't... I don't even think I had it in my book. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I, I don't. I know I didn't actually. You know. Wow. That, yeah, that sucks. That on me. I have to. <laughs> we need to do a revision. <laughs> um, it's tough to do that. You know, you are. You're taught that you're supposed to be loving and giving and kind to others. Mm -hmm. and not loving and giving and kind to oneself. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to be accepting of self and you're going to deal with a demon of self-critique, you're going to learn how to love yourself, you have to be able to renew that most every day. Mm -hmm. That's hard. Ever heard of acts of love? Yeah, well, like I said, how much do we take an act of love to ourself? Mm. Give, it, give me an example. How would... How would <clears throat> I, I think, okay, I got a perfect example on a big factor of what I call the cornerstone of mental health, self-care, self right? Okay. Talked about it on a show many times, fun, relaxing, enjoyable activities that are not self-destructive in any way, and they're not work-related tasks. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be able to kind of cope with life, You've got to be able to get to a point where you allow yourself to step out, take a break, tune it out. And then you go back and do things that you need to do. But an, an act of love for yourself is allowing time for that mm. self-care. And sometimes that's five minutes in the middle of the day. I like to tell people, Courtney, I've literally had people waiting in my lobby because my brain is a little bit fried. I've been frazzled and dazzled and kind of struggling for a day. I've been busy and I just need to sit here in my office and play Star mm -hmm. Wars Heroes on my phone. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. In fact, another example, just this week, I was <laughs> editing, editing, writing, writing hours. My eyes were bugging out of my head looking at the screen and I knew I needed to do something. So I put it all away and I turned on an old episode of Friends and I watched Perfect. a 30, 30 minute TV show <laughs> right in the middle of the day. <laughs> and I didn't yeah. feel guilty about it at all. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. That's absolutely, <clears throat> you know, I actually did a, a repeat. Do you ever watch the show? Cheers. Do you like cheers? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Courtney, I went, that, that was one of my first, been a couple few, well, maybe five, six years ago now. It was one of my first major Netflix binges. <laughs> is I just spent a day and nice. I went all the way back to episode one. Do you have any idea how many episodes there are of Cheers? Oh, I imagine a lot. <laughs> oh, a lot. God. It was like 15, 20 <laughs> seasons, about oh. 30 every episode. I mean, it was on every night when the, in the <laughs> 90s and 80s when I was in college and stuff. Mm. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of episodes. Okay. <laughs> this was a cool article <clears throat> that I wanted to add in here that I thought was kind of cool in just their rundown on how to love yourself. Know yourself. Say no when you need to 
to don't compare yourself to others. Wait a minute, what am I doing? Oh, because I, I wrote my, I wrote this weird. I typed it weird. All right, let me start over. So this is an article actually, and it'll be on the show notes. Know yourself is the goal. Say no when you need to. Don't compare yourself to others. Be truly present. Know and use your strengths. Give yourself a treat. Be honest with yourself. This is a pretty decent list, isn't it? Yeah. I, yeah, it is. Let yourself off the hook for your mistakes and imperfections. Work on forgiving yourself for your bigger, uh, uh, or what did I say? Work on forgiving yourself for the bigger stuff. Accept that some people won't like you. <clears throat> Make fun a priority. Practice gratitude. Write down your success, feeling your feelings. Take good care of your body. How about that? Just physical care, right? Mm, yeah. Pursue a hobby, self-care. Mm -hmm. uh, stand up for yourself. I thought this was interesting. Write yourself a love letter. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hi, self. <laughs> I love you. Can I just say I love you? Okay, now I'm getting a little bit corny. But it's a pretty good list, right? Ask for help when you need it. Speak kindly to yourself. I thought it was a pretty strong and long list of specifics yeah. in this. Yeah, that's a great list. The one that struck stuck out to me is uh, let yourself off the hook for the small errors and imperfections. Yeah. That that one that one kind of I felt a little little something when you said that one. <laughs> yeah, and you know it's it's funny because that's what I started off. I mean, listen to those lyrics again. Mm -hmm. It is so hard, but I mean, gosh, if we can actually get to a place <clears throat> with ourselves the way the John Legend song is, and then my gosh, if you can get to a place with your spouse, like yeah. this is hard to be in that place mm -hmm. where all of me loves all of you, love your curves and all your edges, all your perfect imperfections. Give your all to me. I'll give my all to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you're my end and my beginnings. Even when I lose, I'm winning. Because if I give you all of me and you give me all of you, like that's, dude. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, it's very awesome. deep. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you're, you're, you know, earlier we were talking about finding someone to trust, to kind of get truth from and to give our all to. That means we have to trust ourselves with that, with all of us. Whoa, right. I know, mind blown, right? We have to trust right. ourselves. Yeah, the audience didn't see my my facial expression <laughs> on the show. If, you, if we get this posted somewhere, you'll be like, I think my whole face just went like, yeah, what? Yeah, Chris, unpack that, please. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that would take a long <laughs> time. No, I will unpack it because it really is, you know, as much as we kind of say, you know, being able to rely on yourself to trust yourself with this is a big deal. Mm -hmm. I'm seriously not sure I want to give all of me to anybody. Right. Let alone want, myself. <laughs> frankly, right. Frankly, yeah. I want to hide half the crap about me. Yeah. yeah. And that's true. Everyone you know? does. You're not alone. I want to hide half the crap, all the insecurities that I think about, mm -hmm. all the doubts that I have, all the <clears throat> fears that I have blowing up all over the place in my head. I mean, mm -hmm. believe me, I try to manage those things, but it is tough to think yeah. it is okay to give all of that to another human being. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> another crazy one is to think, crazy? Did I say crazy? <laughs> it's one of those days. <laughs> it really is, Courtney. <laughs> Gosh. <clears throat> The, the reality that we might have that with God or your creator or your creator, yeah. your understanding. Mm. He's got all of that already known. Like, come on, mm -hmm. stop it. Yeah. That's trippy. If you really, really, really needle into that. Yeah. You, know, you call him Allah or Yahweh or whatever your Buddhist belief is. You know, yeah. like somebody is needled in your head and in your heart and is absolutely already all seeing and knowing about that. <laughs> And and still likes us and still loves us. <laughs> and accepts us. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, personally, I find comfort in that. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, it, when I get through the intimidating part of it. Right. If, 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 if I can be accepted by there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. can't I do that to myself? <laughs> right. Right. A little bit. <laughs> right. 
So yeah, acceptance, self-acceptance, defeating the demon of self-critique and learning to love oneself. So how does mental health and insecurities come into this equation? I began to think about this, you know, from a therapist perspective, right? You know, you, you've, you've got to realize that people listening to the show, you know, there may be many people that, and I think I alluded to this earlier some point, did I not, Courtney? Like people have conditions. Yeah. Those conditions are real. Absolutely. You know, and when, when people have a condition that puts them in a space, biologically, they're not doing anything wrong. They're not contributing to the problem. Mm -hmm. It just, your body gets wired towards OCD type anxiety and mm -hmm. your obsession based thought process that is biological in the way that we kind of partly understand and partly don't drives you to be obsessed with your arms. <laughs> Mm-hmm. They're too long. I swear. The arms are too long. Random, mm -hmm. I know it sounds like, but OCD drives you to be obsessed about things, mm -hmm. right? right? Depression puts you in a space neurologically where your dopamine levels are low, your serotonin levels are low. You really are not able to function on a bright and level, not intelligence, but you know, dark mm -hmm. space and sadness that you're in. You know, it's that's you're not doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. You get right. stuck there. That's a powerful, powerful thing, Courtney, that I, I feel like people don't fully understand when you don't have one of those types of conditions that we have. Mm -hmm. in our world. Makes oh, sense? I, oh, absolutely. Makes sense. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to draw that out because I'm, a, I guess I'm a little defensive. <clears throat> yeah. A little bit protective of a lot of the things that I see day in and day out, you know, mm -hmm. in, in my office. This makes it doubly hard. Mm. When you got something that's grabbing you, mm -hmm. and, and, and and if you are battling some of that, <clears throat> understand self acceptance becomes even more difficult. Okay, Charlie, move on. Did I just jump on a major soft box? There, soft box. <laughs> it's a soft box. No, it it was a needed soap box. It was thank needed. You. So thank you. I know lots of people appreciate it. Okay, so. <clears throat> How about, this is another time I'm going to mention my book. I, I've been mentioning this, maybe it's just because I've been thinking about it a lot lately, but this was a perfect chapter. I don't know what chapter it was, but I, I, I checked it out. Related to insecurities, right? <clears throat> do you remember this, Courtney? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Insecurities can make us delusional. Do you remember that chapter? Mm, I do. I do delusional. remember it. Ba yeah. <laughs> That's a big word right there, too. Do challenge insecurities. Don't listen to them. I don't know what, cha what chapter that is, but let me say that again. Insecurities can make us delusional. Do challenge insecurities. Don't listen to them because listening just puts you in that cyclical space, right? Anxiety right. aside, OCD aside, mm -hmm. we can all get a little bit circular mm -hmm. on the, the self-critiques and the insecurities that drive us that actually makes us delusional. What do you think I mean by delusional? Well... It means that you're not thinking clearly, maybe attaching more meaning or substance to something than what should be attached to it. I don't know. What did you mean, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have to read the chapter. Where the thing I, I, I think believing things that aren't true. Yeah. The term delusional in the mental health field is actually psychotic. Gotcha. You psychotically believe things that are not true. You know, the FBI is after me. Okay. Yeah. People can see me from the sky. They're able to inject thoughts into my brain. Like we actually have psychosis, points of psychosis where people do, you know, those are, those are some specific things that people, you know, people get into a place of, of actually believing for various mm. reasons. It might be a manic state. It might be, you know, schizophrenia and, and whatever. I mean, there's mental health conditions that you know, that can operate that way. But if you have insecurities ranging and roving and roaming around and circularly in your head, can you not believe things that are not true? Oh, absolutely. Like you can almost literally get psychotic. Yeah. And then I think you, yeah, when you get to that point, I think you look for ways or things that happen that validate those false feelings. False, untrue feelings, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. So let's move on a little bit to where do 
did we learn to do this? You know, I got to thinking mm-hmm. part of what we want to get out of to create self-acceptance is to get out of what we've learned through life to allow for these negative things like insecurities and whatnot to kind of be popping at us, right? Mm-hmm. So where do we learn this from? What does the world say <clears throat> about self-acceptance? Mm. I was just randing, roaming around in my brain thinking, you know, doesn't the world tell us that we have to work hard to get ahead? Mm-hmm. Now, we have a lot of downloads across the world. We, we, we really have become quite the international podcast. Welcome to somebody in China. That's pretty cool that we've got, I, I think, a people, a person or two, you know, welcome aboard. By the way, reach out, contact it through a therapist's eyes. I'd love to hear who you are out there in, in all sorts of countries. But, in, in, you know, speaking, I, I only say that because I know that, you know, countries around the world have lots of different cultures, right? So mm-hmm. this one, I think, is particularly one that we beat ourselves up in the Americas pretty strongly with. Mm. Now, I'm probably, I'm sure I'm downing other cultures. Like, I know the Gra- Great Britain, you all out there are pretty, you know, stiff upper lip and... <clears throat> bang yourselves over the head with, I'm not working hard enough. I'm not working hard enough. You know, where else in the world does the, do you think does that? I'm, I'm not really a cultural expert. Believe uh, in hard work. You're not yeah. doing enough kind of thing. <clears throat> I'm not certain. I think a lot of the Asian countries, when it comes to like academics and technology and things like that, oh, they're that, not. That yeah. Sense. Yeah. Yep. I'm not smart enough. I'm not working hard enough in school. I need to get ahead, work to get ahead, work hard to get ahead. That, yeah. Mm-hmm. probably right even in african nations for that matter i mean you know you you have to pick yourself up from nothing you know yeah. we you know we, we we see that from you know inner cities and people struggling with poverty in <clears throat> our country you know you, you got to be the best to get out of this you have to be the nfl or the nba all-star to get out of the neighborhoods and slums and stuff i mean mm-hmm. gosh can we not just be enough <laughs> it's tough yeah yeah. Work hard to get ahead. You're not good enough, the world says. You fundamentally, as you are, are not good enough. It's opposite of what we're looking for. There's always someone better. There's always someone tougher. There's always someone prettier. There's always some better parent. Did you ever hear the world telling you that? <laughs> yeah, almost every day, right? Right? <laughs> Social media, I did mention. Others are always seen perfect. Mm -hmm. on there they have the perfect little kids with the perfect little grades and the perfect little behavior oh Courtney they're (laughs) driving me nuts (laughs) how do you really feel (laughs) I just went a little too far with that one didn't I what does our family life coming up say about self Mm -hmm. aren't we always corrected yeah parenting oh yeah you're doing it wrong son Mm -hmm. here's the right way to do it why didn't you get the A? Why did you get the B or the C? Or the, What's wrong yeah. with you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. In parenting, we make the mistakes of being loud <clears throat> on mistakes and kind of quiet compliments. Mm-hmm. Right? It's true. I mean, this stuff is, I think about these things a little bit. I actually got slapped in the face, man. I'm going to be, be, be genuine for just a moment and you know, I hated it. It, it. it sucked. You know, my my son, he's 16. He literally, Courtney, the other day, uh, he stopped me in his tracks because he said, you know, something to the effect of, you know, Dad, sometimes I just feel like you and Mom, you just see my faults. You know, that's the only thing you see is, my, you know, my faults and my screw-ups. <laughs> we must have the oh. same 16. <laughs> I have a 16-year-old son, and we recently heard that, too. Really? And I, I yeah, I felt so bad oh it sucked <laughs> it did it, it did it did because we are having struggles right now with him we are having yeah. a lot of challenges mm-hmm. i forgot that you had as an older kid actually yeah. yeah it's 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 been tough on those guys because of the pandemic i mean you're yeah. right you're you're 16 year old is he a, is he a junior as well yep sure I is i forgot that you had that old of a kid courtney yeah yeah has there not high school experience been jacked up yeah yeah is yours Start driving being... yet? Yes. They are. I don't know yes. how you got that driver's education, man. Where'd you go for that? <laughs> I don't even remember. Yeah, we got it. We slipped it in right just in time. Oh, you got it right before everything? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think my kid's going to drive until he's 20 the way this is going. I mean, it's <laughs> ridiculous. So be thoughtful about that. And if you fall into the same you know, track I did with my son, it sounds like you did Courtney as well. Mm-hmm. Like. You know, it, this is this is hard to kind of be 
you know, in good setting with some of this stuff, sometimes it just catches you and it just hits you. But what are, where else? We need to kind of begin wrapping up a little bit. Oh, <clears throat> I guess I'm listing things about where we learn this. Failure. Mm-hmm. Failures, mm-hmm. past mistakes, they can just keep us stuck. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the resentments and the regrets that we get bought into <clears throat> should have done this, should have done that, should have done it the other way. You know, <laughs> the shoulda, coulda, woulda's. <laughs> right. Have you heard that expression? Yeah. Exactly. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Stop yeah. it. Just you know stop what? it. <laughs> stop it. You, you, yeah. you could have done something differently. You did it the way that you did. What do you need to learn from it? And how do you move forward from there? How's that for a switch? There's a mm. cognitive reframe right there. Mm-hmm. Instead of yeah. just replaying that and replaying that and replaying that and more and more and more digging yourself into the dirt of a hole where I'm just stuck because I suck. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And if you're already in that hole, you might need somebody to put a ladder down in that hole that you trust and, and help oh. let, allow them to help you out. Wow. Right. Love that metaphor. Right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Failure to make amends or apologize also is where we learn this. Mm, yeah, I I made I heard early on in my parenting that a lot of kids never heard an apology from their parents and therefore did not know how to apologize moving forward. And so when I heard that when my children were very young, I made it a point <laughs> to make sure. <laughs> Let me find something today to apologize. Yeah. For. Oh, it's not hard. It's not <laughs> no, hard. I, <laughs> I knew where you were going with that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it is. It is true. And and I <clears throat> that's that's a little tip. There's a, there's a little tip for you. <clears throat> if you have children, find something to apologize to them about, like and make it a heartfelt, genuine apology. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I have done that uh, to my kids. That's that is one thing I will say that I've done well. Mm-hmm. I've screwed up and I've told them, hey, look, I'm really sorry about that. I do. I don't do it near enough. I'll say that also. <laughs> I don't do it near enough, because yeah. if you apologize more then you're criticizing or guiding new behavior for your kids, you're probably going to be in a better shot. Mm -hmm. So failure to make amends or apologize though. I mean, that leads to poor acting out and leaving lasting effects, you know, without being able to make amends or apologize and whatnot. And then there's the therapy activity I mentioned earlier. Yeah. On good and one bad and the bad leads to two good and so on. Then you got three goods and one bads. And, <laughs> you know, that's a really powerful thing to do. I started the show off with, and now we're going to end the show up. <clears throat> Can you remember some of on that list that I started the show out with or just your own thoughts, right? What is the result? I mean, think about this, guys. What is the result of having an acceptance of yourself, dealing with the demons of self-critique and learning to love yourself. What is the result? Yeah, I think it, well, yeah, I think it all sums up to more happiness and contentment with better relationships. And I think I remember the word boundaries somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah. It, it really is a core component of your own mental health. Hmm. Listen, if you don't have some level of self-acceptance, you're going to struggle Mm -hmm. in this world. Yeah. You really, really will. No doubt. Mm -hmm. You, you can't do much without it. You can't guide kids in this world and teach them. You can't work productively and be a, a, a member of the workforce very effectively. Like you can't love somebody else. Holy crap. Like, right? <laughs> How yeah. are you going to love and give? Because I'll tell you what, when you're loving somebody else, there's a whole lot of giving that comes with loving somebody. You yeah. ain't got much to give of what you accept and like about yourself. How are you going to love somebody else? Hmm. This point. is a central, significant, core aspect of living. Yeah, listen to this list that I prepared. And I did. <clears throat> I just stopped at the letter Q, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> when I was really thinking about what is the result of learning how to accept yourself? You get grounded. Mm. You become insightful. 
you're able to be more giving to others. You're more accepting of others. You're more patient with people. You have good boundaries and you can set boundaries easier and stand your ground. It's it's it, more able to be a better parent. You're not parenting out of fear or shame. You're more giving or forgiving, I mean. You learn more easily. You relate to others better. You're more stable in your marriage. You're not afraid of a creator. You're less angry. You increase courage for taking action and making change happen. You are a better worker, more productive, more objective. Like self-acceptance leads to a lot of these things, man. Yeah, that's such a great list. And I just stopped at Q. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we could have gone on a little bit. Yeah. You know, and because it's so, so core of of an issue. All right. We need to kind of wrap up, dance on out of here. Hey, Courtney. Hey. It was fun doing this with you. I've been waiting a long time for this one. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. I look yeah, forward we, to the rest of the month. Yeah, we got you for the whole month. That's awesome. So closing thoughts, comments, you know, have we done a good job? highlighting some of these strong points today. Oh, I think so. I think I've walked away with a little tid, you know, some tidbits, some nuggets of wisdom. I I hope uh, all your listeners have too. Things we can certainly apply right away. Cool. Yeah. Well, I have no idea where we're going next. I have to think about (laughs) it, but uh, we will be back on Thursday, Facebook lives. I think we've got a little bit jacked up this week, but I got one last thought for you as I'm dressed for it. (laughs) Let's go Mountaineers. <laughs> this Saturday, we need to go watch some football. You agree? I love I love football. <laughs> awesome. All right, y'all. Have a good week, and we're going to tune out of here. We'll see you Thursday in a few days. Take care. Bye now.